Hello friends, welcome back to Stable Automation. In this video, I will demonstrate how to configure S7-1200 PLC as Modbus TCP client. Modbus client will send query to Modbus server and ask for data. And if Modbus server have those data, then it will reply to the client. In this video, I have configured Siemens logo PLC as Modbus TCP server. But you can communicate S7-1200 PLC with any device that supports Modbus server using the same function that I will cover in this video. In logo PLC, I have configured three holding registers which keeps increasing its value every second. And from S7-1200 PLC, we will send query to Modbus server to read those data and will store in an array of integer. This is the block which we require to configure to enable the S7200 PLC to work as Modbus client. Now let us first check Modbus server on this Modbus tester. Disconnected with server. And we want to monitor holding register starting from address 40529. Counter has reached its limit. So just simply restarting the logo PLC to restart the counters as I have not configured any reset logic just for testing. Okay, now counter have restarted and again from the beginning we can see the counter value is increasing. Now let's configure MD underscore client block. This can be found from this communication action. Define its instance DB. Now we require to configure all these parameters. Select the block and press F1. So from help file you can find more details about each parameters. I have already made a list of parameters and its data type for our ready reference. Now let's create a global DB and define all these parameters. Give any name you would like to. REQ, request the Modbus TCP server for data. Disconnect. As its name suggests, it disconnects the communication connection. MB mode contains the information whether we want to read or write. MB data address contains the information on which address data is to be read or written. And MB data length contains the number of values to be read or written. MB data pointer is like a data buffer or memory for the data to be received from the Modbus server or to be sent to the Modbus server. In short, uh, we need to use these addresses to read or write on our Modbus server. Connect. It is a group of parameters required to configure for connection with the server. Data type is tcon ip underscore v4. Done. It sets to 1 as soon as the last Modbus job is completed without any error. Busy. It sets to 1 when Modbus request is being processed. Error. If there is any error, it sets to 1. And status. Return the status call of the instruction. It is very useful in case if you have any error during the connection with the Modbus TCP server. Now here we, we will configure starting address 
to be read from the modulus server. Length of the consecutive resistors. This interface ID can be found from system tags or this system constants. And in our case, it is 64. This is unique ID for each connection instance. You need to take care if you have defined this MB client block multiple times. 11 for the TCP connection. For PLC as Modbus client, this will be true, and for PLC at Modbus server, this will be false. Here, define the IP address of the Modbus server. And for Modbus TCP, mostly port number will be 502. Now let's define all these parameters in this Modbus client block. Okay, now let's download the program in the PLC. By enabling this request bit, block will start communication with the Modbus server. starting the logo PLC to start the counters again from zero. As this is for demonstration project only, I have not created much logic in logo PLC. Now let's check and compare data in Modbus Tester and S7 PLC and S7 100 PLC's data pointer. And now let's check the meaning of this status call. We are getting 0000, 0 7005 and 7006. 0, 0, 0, 0 is instruction executed without any error. 7005 and 6 data is being sent and received. So friends uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. 
hope this video was helpful to you thank you for watching see you in next video